Welcome back to Fat Tech 2015. My name is Norm Haddad. I'm here with Mike Morgan, the general manager of Lincoln Automation Canada. That's correct. Uh, what we have here is a submerged arc mechanized system, correct? That's correct. Tell us a little bit about what we're going on here. It's a tandem system, correct? It's a tandem submerged arc system. So the first thing you can see is we have a customized a welding head for tandem. One of the problems with tandem uh, sub arc is the ability to easily move the two uh, heads together and set the angles. In the past you'd have to use uh, a set of tools like Allen keys, you'd be undoing this, you'd be moving things around, things would fall down. It was a nightmare. So with this head we've simplified everything. So you can see we have a manual slide here. This is able to move the, the, the trail arc up and down as you can see there and then we have a slide here and this is able to move the lead arc in and out so this way we can actually set the distance between the two heads in addition to that we have a quick release le lever here this allows us to set the angle and also we have one on this head as well so now we can set the angle so that's very important to anybody who's done tandem uh, sub arc before what you can also see here is we have uh, a tactile seam tracker which is uh, manufactured by Arc Products and we have a, a camera system here. What we try to do now is keep the welder at the base of a manipulator rather than put him on the end of the boom and by using a camera he's able to see the weld at all times. So if you're welding on top of a pipe, 12 foot pipe, 15 foot pipe, he can be at the base using a camera with a high definition screen there, he can see exactly what's going on. The other things we have here is a customized flux pickup. In the past, a hose would just simply lay on the work and it would bounce around. So we came up with the idea of a linear slide here and it just actually ro rolls with the wheels on the workpiece. So as the workpiece changes, this just moves up and down and follows the, the, uh, the, the weld or the other work to pick up the flux. The flux delivery is, is made with these two nozzles here. We can actually put the flux exactly where we want with the flexibility here. And it comes from the flux hopper, which you can see here. We also have a flux recovery system. It's air powered. It's a venturi here with compressed air. That creates the suction. The suction comes up here and it goes into the hopper. There's a filter here, takes out the, uh, the coarse grains and puts the uh, unused flux back in the, in the hopper here, which is then fed back into the system. These are, these are the slides that are attached uh, via cable to the, uh, the tactile seam tracker. I don't know whether you can see this moving. There's actually an S milled into this plate to actually simulate the tracking left and right. It also is able to uh, track up and down so you can keep the, the, uh, the contact tip, the work distance exactly as set at all times. So I don't know whether you can see the slides moving. They're actually obviously going to move very slowly because of uh, the welding. Mike, you have answered every single question I could possibly think of in right. my mind. The only thing I can think of other than what we've seen here is software. How is this system run? Right. So now you want to take a look at the fully integrated controller for the, the overall system. So in the past, you would have multiple controllers. Uh, based all around here or on the weld head. Now we're bringing everything into one. So what we can see here is I have the ability to move the boom. I can move the boom up, I can move down, I can move the actual boom in and out and set a welding speed if, if required. So you would set the welding speed here and then I can actually move the boom in and out to make a straight weld. The other things we have here, as you're welding, I can set the weld current or the voltage, I can set the weld current. If you were welding in uh, different modes, you can also set wire feed speed. It's a tandem system, so you can see we have a lead arc and a trail arc. At the same time, as you're welding, we can change some other variables like the balance, the offset, or the frequency, all while you're welding. We have multiple screens within here. I could set up, and this screen, I could set up a start procedure, an end procedure, which is really your crater, and things like that. You can save it and then move back to here. Depending on the wire, you just go into, the, again, a different screen. You can do a search. The machine is using ArcLink over Ethernet, the best protocol for our uh, welding machines. We speak in the same language. It can search the memory. We can pull up a mode. So if I'm welding 530 second and I want to go with uh, constant current, I simply press this. It brings up the wave shape from the machine and then I have some set points ready to go. So this is bringing all the control into one area for the welder, so you're not trying to turn things on here and on and off here. 
this is a new integration into the column and boom system that we have for this. When will this be available? We're expecting a launch in January. What are we going to do? The actual, the, um, the communication was the difficult thing with the welding machines. That is now complete. So we're just going to tidy up the actual HMI, the visual interface that you're going to see with the welder, just to try and make it even more simple for the, uh, for the welder to operate. Mike, thank you very much for taking the time and being so thorough with this machine. If you have any other questions, you can go to lincolnelectric.com. Again, Mike, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be back with another video soon.